whose name was Ziba, and Ziba, and when he had called him unto David, the king asked unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan, have yet a son, and is lame on his feet. Verse number four, the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto him, The king, behold, he is in the house of Machan, the son of Amiel, in Lodabah. And the king sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodabah. And Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David, and he fell on his face, and did reverence him, and said unto him, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold, thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely, for surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake, and will restore unto thee the land of Saul, to thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continuously. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou should have looked upon such a dead dog as I am? And the king said unto him, Ziba thy servants, and said unto him, I have given unto thee the master of the son that pertains to Saul and all of his house. For just a few moments, we want to just draw our minds and our attention in an esculpatory manner to understand the essence of this particular text. As we assume the text and to see what truths this text lies, there is one pertinent truth that we must grab. And this is the truth that we must understand the foundation. Everything has a foundation. Look at the person beside you and say, neighbor, everyone has a history. The reason you're sitting here is because of a history, because of your experiences, because of the things that you've gone through has developed a history in your life. And tonight we've got to see the assumed history of this text. There was a relationship between two friends that were as close as friends could be, a guy by the name of Jonathan and David. David is obviously the chosen of the Lord to be the next king of Israel. And Jonathan says because he understands the oil that's on David's life, that he will step aside and respect the oil. But there's one statement that he tells David. He says that when you come into your kingdom, I need you to remember me and my family. This is the divinic cord that runs from the Old Testament to the New Testament because a defender of the oil, when a thief on the cross stood there many years later, almost thousands of years later, and made a similar declaration when defending Christ, when the other male factor that was a thief getting ready to persecute him and said, if you are who you say you are, come down and save yourselves as well as us. And he responded to this man in a positive manner. He says these words to him. He says, this man is a just man. And he said, uh, he said uh, this man is a just man. And when he heard the statement, uh, he said, Father, because I've defended you, when I come, when you come into your kingdom, uh, I, I, I know I deserve what I, what's, what's happening to me right now. But when you come into your kingdom, remember me. It is the adage where he says to him, I want you to be gracious to me because I respected the oil on your life. Now the text is powerful because he respects the oil on his life. And we find the text unfolding because he says to him, when I come into my kingdom, David is now southern, settled the northern and the southern kingdom. And he's in his place of power, permanence and power. And now he calls the record. He says, now, is there anyone left of the house of Saul? Tell somebody God keeps his promises. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to understand that, that they may be delayed and that there may be some issues that's stopping it from coming into fruition right now. But delayed is not denied that God keeps his promises. Watch the text. Watch the text. Now he's at the place where he's in the place of promise. And he calls and says, is there anyone left? When he calls, there comes one whose name is Ziba. Now let's deal with the insurrection of Ziba and his tenacity because he's indicative of all church folks that were operating the church. Watch what Ziba does. When Ziba, they call for one that's left of the house of Saul, Ziba said there is one, but he is a cripple. It is strange that there are some people when they describe leadership, they describe leadership by the issues that leadership have rather than who they are. 
somehow you've got to understand the legacy and the royalness of, of who you represent rather than trying to describe the issues that they've got in their life and so what he says is that that he is one but he is a cripple uh, and then the second thing they say is that not only is he's a cripple but he's in a place called Lodibot second thing they do with leaders they describe where you are they describe what you've been through uh, that describe loaded by just because I'm stuck on broke bill and sad lane don't mean I'm always be there. I wish I had three people to testify because I'm there right now. I'm not going to always be here because I'm sad and shooting bad right now. Don't mean I'm always going to be sad and shooting bad. Weeping may endure for a night but touch somebody and tell them that joy comes in the morning. Watch the text. Watch the text. Let's peruse the text and all of a sudden they deal with this issue but nobody ever deals with how he got in the shape that he is how he is a cripple now the funny thing about it is that he is a cripple and nobody deals with how he got to be a cripple is that when the new administration came in somebody was in charge of caring for him the people that should have loved him the most somehow they dropped him in the process I want to talk to somebody that you got dropped in the process uh, they should have loved you they should have been there to restore you they should have been there to keep you they should have been there to cover you they should have they said they love you they were concerned about you they were assigned to your life but some Somehow in the assignment they drop you and the truth of the matter is I'm talking to drop people in here I can tell you because drop people are people that got issues and they don't understand why they're still struggling from these issues that happened way back yonder yesteryear they're still dealing with the handicap today you know I got dropped now, the person that tipped in your room and left a scar you've been dropped the person that lied to you and told you they would always be there and they walked out on you you've been dropped the family that said that you will always be together and they walked out on you when you had a problem you've been dropped I'm talking to drop people drop people come to church they do their worship and they leave drop people don't all men are dogs drop people I can't trust anybody people are full of gang drop people and so tonight in the process of being church bound and drop you got pain and issues that you can't even deal with you got you got you got problems emotionally and socially you try to be functional but the handicap of things that happened to you years ago has still given you a spiritual and emotional paralysis today so you can't love like you need no relationship works no fellowship seems to be able to happen because you're bearing the scars of yesterday trying to function in your current day and so now in his dropness something happens there because in his dropness he got dropped he got hurt he's dealing with issues and the church is full of people because it is only those people you trust the most that can hurt you the greatest yeah, it's the people that can get in your inner circle. It's the people that can get close to you. It's not your enemies that can drop you. It's the people that should love you that drops you the hardest. It's the people that should be there. And the problem that I've got with the text is this, that he got dropped by somebody that should have loved him. And the second thing, that he's in my chair house, a descendant of chair and near Lodibar. Now watch this. Now, these are the relatives of David's wife. Uh, and so he was close to his change, but still out of grasp. Talk to somebody that changed. You're almost blessed. You're almost come out. You're almost growing. You're almost at the next level. It's within your grasp, but still so far back. And watch the text. I got to get out of here. Watch the text. All of a sudden, the man walks up to him and says to him, they call for him, and they said, Phoebe, come here. Phoebe, come here. Real quick, Phoebe, and come into uh, the king is calling for you he's afraid to answer the door of new opportunities because he remembers the last time they called for him they dropped him and the truth of the matter is some of us are dealing with the last time we went through something and it still has us paralyzed this time we're afraid to throw our weight around and exhaust our opportunities because we remember the last time we tried to soar and build relationship we got stabbed spiritually in the back and we're still crumping and hard of the same wound that happened years ago watch the text now they call him and tell him come out of Phoebe he's afraid now understand what happens in when they call him out the first thing they have to do is they have to take his old clothes off and to put some new clothes on so he has to have